If you don't know what to practice and you don't want to go to a drum teacher every week or have the hassle of like recording yourself, then you can literally. So a while ago, I actually discovered that like most, if not all beginner drummer problems stem from this one thing. It just comes down to if you're someone who's frustrated of not being on time, even though you practice with a metronome, then this is for you. This is literally for you. And this can literally like triple or quadruple your drumming if you understand how to get rid of your on drums. I've discovered, I'm not even joking, a literal scientific method to consistently practice drums and it this works like wonders here is a literal proof that it works on my drums as you can see over the last six days i have been literally able to practice drums every single day for an hour straight after applying this method and to have this good and productive practice sessions i use a concept that's actually in business but i applied it to drumming it's called so is actually a very powerful tool if used right and i'm gonna show you how to do that in just a second part one you've just learned how to play drums i just learned how to play drums i'm really excited to play this new instrument i remember though one day the storm hit me hard i'd practice to what drumio has taught me i'd practice to drum beats online i've practiced to non-glamorous drummer you know all of these drum channels teaching me like oh yeah here's your first beginner uh drum fill and you have to do this thing and i did them all and then one day it just hit me hard i didn't know what to practice anymore so at this point i actually knew the two and four beat and i wanted to practice more but i just could not i specifically remember the time where i literally like searched on youtube how to find what the f to practice on drums when you're self-taught nothing came up literally if you search on youtube that nothing comes up and i think it's very sad that like all these big youtubers the these big drum youtubers give you the advice but don't actually tell you like what to do when drum beats online uploads a video like a title like okay how to you know make your technique better cool but like i don't even know if my technique's actually bad in the first place you know what i mean of course there are solutions but i just could not like know what to else practice because yes there are people who are teaching you like the beginner two and four beats but then i just couldn't move forward because no one was actually advising me because i was self-taught right and so when you're self-taught obviously you have no teacher right that's the whole point you're self-taught and so i had no teacher to critique me and so i was kind of lost and I didn't know what to do. I'm gonna assume that most people who are watching this video know at least how to play, you know, the Billie Jean beat or like the two and four beat. But then after that, this is where most people get stuck at because they don't know what they should specifically improve to then improve their drumming. This point is actually where coincidentally all the, you know, like the big drum industries want you to pay money for their courses that they sell or like coaching and stuff but i'll give away everything right now because i really don't want you to experience the same like two-year road that i had like this slow kind of road up until i got drum lessons and that's how i could really like push myself so you don't know what to do next which results in a wanting to give up b actually giving up c you start getting drum lessons which is what i did but you don't have to do that i'll teach you another method and d you don't do anything to improve your drumming this was also me by the way so bro the simplest actionable step 
that you'll do right now. And please do it right now. When I give you some actionable steps that you'll do in this video, please take it seriously and actually do it. Because this will result in your drumming actually being so much greater. So the first actionable step that you'll do in just a moment is question what you have already learned. And did you actually learn it properly? So because you're a self-taught drummer, you might have actually learned the wrong things. I figured that my technique was all wrong when I literally started getting drum lessons. And then my teacher was like, are you stupid? Why are you holding the drumstick like that? And that's when I realized like, oh, I, I've actually learned it very wrong. And so I just want you to take a few minutes, pause this video and literally just question yourself. Like, did you actually learn your technique and everything correctly? Does your technique match up with, you know, the drummers that you often look to. So for example, like if I watch Zach Goose, for example, Zach Goose is a real G, by the way. No one can change my opinion about that. He's the best drummer. <laughs> now I'm just kidding. But like, I, I loved Zach Goose, right? If I love Zach Goose, I look at his technique, right? And see how he holds the drumsticks. See how he plays the kick drum. And then compare your technique to his. Now, of course, he's better than you. But I just want you, you to kind of see if you have the right technique or not and by the way if you said like you don't need to question yourself and you're like i don't need this uh let me just skip this part then you are probably the person who needs this exercise the most so do it right now If you don't know what to practice and you don't want to go to a drum teacher every week or have the hassle of like recording yourself, then you can literally part two, how to understand your weaknesses. So the last week I was about to go to Bali. I said my drum teacher goodbye and went to Bali. And in Bali, I actually didn't have any drum teachers whatsoever. So it was just me self-taught again so naturally i just found some ways to deal with it and uh, at first i didn't know what to do because like it was all new to me and you know i was in a different country and all that stuff like i was literally across the other side of the world i didn't know any drum teachers there heck i didn't even know any studios or like drum hardware stores and stuff like that it was like completely restarting drums all over again i just found some ways to deal with not having a drum teacher and so i made an important discovery that i'll teach you right now so what do drum teachers do they look at you and they just go like oh here, here, here you messed up uh so i'll just give you this uh full like 50 page exercise of this one specific book and they just do that they literally just spot your mistakes and then give you exercises to solve it. And personally, it was for me. I don't know about you. Maybe your drum teacher did some magical, like, I don't know, read the Quran or something. <laughs> I don't know what he did. But for me, it was like that. So you can basically create a DIY version of a drum teacher by recording yourself. Now, I know, don't click off this part. I know this is very basic advice and you've heard this advice like a million times already. And YouTubers say like, oh yeah, guys, just just record yourself and it will be fun. <laughs> but the first time I truly discovered how powerful this recording tool was, was when I was again in bali so i was in bali and i just opened up this youtube channel that you're watching right now uh, about eight months ago right and of course it's a drumming channel right so i had to record drumming videos for a drumming channel boom so obviously i set up my tripod and i just recorded myself and i i was kind of like obligated to record my drumming because like it's a drumming channel and that was truly the first time i kind of consistently recorded myself before that i heard this advice of recording yourself and i was like Ah oh, nah man, it doesn't even work. I mean, I, something in my brain was just telling me like, nah, it's not worth it. Don't don't record yourself. It's whatever. It'll it'll, it'll just fix itself. Let's keep that aside and say you don't want to record yourself. Another way that you can understand your weaknesses 
is by actually just going to a drum teacher, which is what I literally did before going to Bali. And look, I know you want to be self-taught, okay? I would literally like hear this advice of just go to a drum teacher. And at the back of my mind, I said to myself like, no, but it would be cooler if I was self-taught. My, my family would admire me more if I actually like was self-taught and that would be that would seem more cooler than you know having normal drum lessons like a normal human being all i can say is no other excuse is valid if you don't want to go to a drum teacher then if you can't actually afford it if you can't afford it then yeah fair enough but other than that is just limiting your potential on drums you might be like oh oh but but, but I can't go because because my family doesn't want me to like no bro you can as you're watching me say this right now your brain is literally gonna generate more and more beliefs about drum teachers like trust me I've been in the same situation and if you're neglecting drum teachers just because you're you think you're gonna look cool then definitely that is a limiting belief no like there's no excuse if you're too lazy to record yourself there are three ways one you can make it easier by setting up the tripod beforehand which i recently discovered this and it genuinely does actually make it easier and we'll talk about that in a second two you can hear your problems out and three you can also get my coaching so i literally made my coaching for this exact problem it's literally free it's in the description if you don't know what to practice and you don't want to go to a drum teacher every week or have the hassle of like recording yourself then you can literally join my free coaching that's in the description and I, i'll literally look at you and give you the right exercises that you need to do so i don't recommend hearing your mistakes out because i've did this for a long time and hearing your mistakes out is essentially like you know you play to something and then you say to yourself like oh i messed up there and i messed up here but the problem with that is you can't really be that specific since you're trying to play and spot your mistakes at the same time. If you don't want a drum lesson or coaching, just record yourself. As an actionable step, do this with me right now, okay? We're gonna go upstairs and we're gonna set our tripod up so that the next time you make it easier for your future self to actually record himself. And I know you're probably like very lazy, right? And you don't wanna get up from your bed, but trust me, it is very worth it. Oh, by the way, as a side note, if you literally just record yourself once, then you'll have like five months worth of work for drumming. You just have to record yourself once. If you don't even have a tripod, that's okay. Just place it somewhere where you can like hear your playing. You don't necessarily have to see it, but you must hear your playing. Essentially just record yourself in some way and then take notes on whatever on your iPhone notes app or whatever. And by the way, this method genuinely helped me. Like I'm not just creating this method out of my app. Like here's literally my list of things to practice. I took down like a note of every single thing I should practice. And then I also like kind of self-diagnosed myself by just looking at myself and then seeing what exercises could actually fix it. So a while ago, I actually discovered that like most, if not all beginner drummer problems stem from this one thing. It just comes down to if you're someone who's frustrated of not being on time, even though you practice with a metronome, then this is for you. This is literally for you. And this can literally like triple or quadruple your drumming if you understand how to get rid of your on drums. Part three, how to eliminate your weaknesses. I always thought that my technique was right. I always thought that I didn't need to improve my technique because like it seemed pretty fine. I didn't need to <laughs> grip the drumsticks like this. I, I gripped it fairly good. But when I got drum lessons, dude, it was a whole nother story. Like I remember one time my teacher was looking at my kick drum playing and then he he was saying so casually like wait why aren't you playing on your big toe and i was like 
You're supposed to do that? Like, I, di I did not know, and I don't think you knew either, that you should have played on your big toe when you're playing on heels up instead of with your, you know, like foot as a whole, which is pretty interesting, actually. You can apply that tip as well. So a while ago, I actually discovered that, like, most, if not all, beginner drummer problems stem from this one thing. So, for example, your left hand being weak, or you can't coordinate yourself on drums. And by the way, I don't know if this was the issue for you as well, but I couldn't coordinate my hi-hat foot in all of that stuff. It just comes down to your body hasn't adapted yet you weren't born with the ability to actually like you know coordinate yourself and when i say it like this it kind of sounds like very obvious but like everyone's searching like what why why can't i play drums normally uh why can't i grip this stick like I, how i wanted to and stuff but bro like give your body some time to adapt for example, like, you can't have the precision and the technique of Michael Jordan when you just start basketball, right? So it would really be unreasonable for you to have this really good technique when you just start drums. So then the next question arises, how do we eliminate those physical problems? Well, as I said, physical problems need adaptation and of course adaptation takes time right so <laughs> the solution to this is actually very simple you just need to play drums like it doesn't matter what you play you just need to play some drums and not backtrack on your progress you're gonna have good technique anyway even if it takes like two years you will still have good technique in the end by the way one thing with technique is that you kind of have to get constant feedback from a drum teacher so this is where the drum teachers or coaches actually come in handy because they can like show you step by step how to hold the drumsticks you don't need it of course but i mean you do have to kind of put in the effort to actually have good technique but a huge factor is still the adaptation time and you'll see over time that your body just naturally you know starts to hold the stick right and all of that stuff also fun fact by the way if you couldn't coordinate your hi-hat foot just like i did then it also comes with time and as you progress in your drumming you actually naturally just start to develop your hi-hat foot you know it it's like a side effect for drumming basically but there is the second problem now how do we eliminate the psychological problems and this is where it gets really really interesting bro because i've never personally seen anyone talk about this on the internet so i recently discovered that these problems actually existed in the first place and one of the problems that were really really holding me back was that i was measuring the gap instead of the gain you know when i look at zach grooves for example i look at him and i go like how is he so good like <laughs> apart from the fact that he's played for like eight years and everything all that how is he so good and how is he better than me and then i look at my own drumming and i go like man well my drumming is so bad now you might not care about this section or like say like ah yeah sure whatever the psychological problems on drums who's who is it who's it gonna help first tom who's it gonna help but this is the next level sh to drumming this is where normal drummers set apart from the superior drummers that i describe often in videos and this can literally like triple or quadruple your drumming if you understand how to get rid of your psychological problems on drums so let's say you're in the habit of scrolling through social media you know when i was in your position i was like literally like on my bed i would just scroll on like instagram i would scroll on youtube yeah i, I never really liked any other social media platforms than instagram and youtube and i just get a little bit of like this discouragement in my mind i had this like subconscious realization that my mind was actually like ranking itself and it was ranking itself one below now i i know this sounds like you know bullshit and like nah we, we don't need to hear this first time why are you suggesting me to learn about this it's again because you get more fulfilled out of drumming 
once you actually eliminate the psychological problem and how we can fix it is very simple actually instead of just you know like scrolling through social media and looking at other drummers play why don't we just play it ourselves the first time i tried this bro the first time i tried this i literally was like oh wait i'm scrolling on social media like a degenerate right and the first time i actually just like popped my phone on my bed and actually just sat on my drums i felt so fulfilled that was literally so good the feeling of being productive instead of scrolling on this degenerate social media apps was so powerful and for five minutes i could practice obviously then i went back to social media but those five minutes were really really nice and fulfilling and i want you to have the same experience that i did so as an actionable step right now if you find yourself scrolling on social media any social media i dare you for two days to get up from your seat whenever you notice yourself on social media and just walk straight to your drum set open your electronic drum set or if you have a physical drum set um you know just sit on it and it doesn't even have to be on your drum set just practice on your practice pad Oh, but, but what if I don't have time for drums and what if I can't practice drums because- No, bro, no excuses. I dare you for two days to literally do this. Just sit on your drum set for five minutes every time you scroll on social media. Now look, I do drums coaching, right? And the biggest struggle that people address to me is the fact that they cannot keep time, which makes sense bro because like imagine if you could just start drums and then be perfectly on time and i've done something recently which significantly made my timing much better so it's called the gap click and stay with me here because if you're someone who's frustrated of not being on time even though you practice with a metronome then this is for you this is literally for you so what it does is basically instead of a normal metronome like uh counting every single bar it replaces the metronome with silence every one bar or every four bars so like if it goes like one two three four one two three four and a normal metronome on a gap click it's like it has a gap between the bars so like it's like one two three four and then it will stop for one bar and then it will go again so there's like one bar of metronome one bar not and this bro this is a game changer i wish i knew about the gap click because no one teached me about the gap click they teach me about the normal metronome but not the gap click and the gap click is the absolute game changer and no one can change my opinion about this this is a hard cold fact bro so as an actionable step that you can literally do is just to use the gap click for only like one or two practice sessions and see how that feels it will feel hard at first because your brain hasn't adapted to timing yet and it will seem very hard to fit on time on the gaps but once you get used to it you physically notice that your limbs and your brain is much more on time when you did exercises with the gap click so if you aren't convinced that these tips work here's my screen time as you can see i have not used social media in forever and my screen time is at its lowest and here's also proof that using gap clicks works so here's me before i i was using gap clicks and this is me literally playing the same thing after i used gap clicks I've discovered, I'm not even joking, a literal scientific method to consistently practice drums and it, this works like wonders. Here is the literal proof that it works on my drums. As you can see, over the last six days, I have been literally able to practice drums every single day for an hour straight after applying this method. Part 3.2, how to eliminate your weaknesses consistently so i have a bunch of experiences where 
I just come home from school and I'll lie down on my bed and I just scroll through YouTube and not even care about my drumming. And I actually tried, like I really tried to practice drums consistently, but I just keep messing up over and over and over again every single day. I'd, I'd say like, I'll, I'll practice drums tomorrow with this new method and then tomorrow comes and I forget to practice drums. And there's like boxing in like two hours. So, you know, I uh, got, got to rest because, you know, I'm going to go to the gym in like two hours. I just make up an excuse and I would not practice drums. But when I did try, there was no method whatsoever that I could apply to my drumming and actually, you know, get consistent drumming. So if you're like this, today you're going to change because I've discovered, I'm not even joking, a literal scientific method to consistently practice drums and it this works like wonders dude i have i'm gonna show you proof at the end of this part that this works and this literally works bro this so well <laughs> i can't even speak that's how much it works you know and i have never seen a method that actually worked this good for me i wish i i'd learned this when i was starting out so these tips come from a neuroscientist like an actual neuroscientist called andrew huberman and he did a whole video on this as well you can check it out and to use this method we're gonna use habits you know the thing your mind makes when you want to brush your teeth every single day we're gonna use that to practice drums consistently now stay with me here because most people already clicked off but that's why they can't actually practice consistently anyway so the second thing we'll do now that we said we'll use our habits we will use something called procedural memory visualizations now i won't go too much into detail of the science here and you know what the procedural memory visualizations is i'll just tell you what worked for me and then you can just copy me so as an actionable step that you can do right now is to get a piece of paper or notes app on your iphone and then write down every single step it takes in order to get to your drum set from your current position once you've written down all the steps specifically write down all the steps by the way you want to visualize those steps by the way for visualizing you don't have to actually like you know close your eyes and just you know like meditate you just have to like think about it with like your eyes open it's not really visualization it's like daydreaming for the third step now get that piece of paper or that iphone notes page and add in how you will feel 15 minutes before and 15 minutes after you drum. This is one of the most important steps. Get the exact steps and then add in how you will feel before and after 15 minutes of drumming. So for me, I wrote down like, I will feel very lethargic and I will not want to play drums. But 15 minutes after I play drums, I'm like, huh, I'm, I'm, I'm productive today. Yeah. And for the last step, we will do something called task bracketing. Again, I will not go too much into detail. For this actionable step, what you have to do is you should practice drums in the morning because you're not only more alert and your brain functions better in the morning, you're more likely to do it because the neuromodulator, you might know it, called dopamine, is more elevated so it just means that you're more motivated to do things in the morning so here are the exact steps that you you should do if you didn't listen one get a piece of paper or a note taking app and write down what steps it takes exactly write it down step by step like write down if you will stand up and then walk on one foot after the other to the drum set write it that specifically to get that same piece of paper and then add in how you will feel before 15 minutes of drumming so for me i feel very tired and i don't want to do it but 15 minutes after i'll usually feel very good and productive and finally practice and do those steps in the morning because that's when you have the most motivation to do things now you might not think this method still works you you might have this like you know concept in your mind but you think that this doesn't work but here is the literal proof 
that it works on my drums. As you can see, over the last six days, I have been literally able to practice drums every single day for an hour straight after applying this method. So you have no excuse right now. Go and apply this method right now as your actionable step. And to have this good and productive practice sessions, I use a concept that's actually in business, but I applied it to drumming. It's called so is actually a very powerful tool if used right. And I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. Part 3.6, how to make eliminating your weaknesses really effective. I can finally practice consistently. I'm feeling great about myself, but then I realize I'm not actually making that much progress. I realize that my technique is still bad and my playing is still sloppy. I didn't know why it was like that because all I was told was just to practice your rudiments and oh yeah, do, th do this exercise. But no one told me when I was starting out how to actually make your practice sessions more effective. And I don't think no one ever had this concept, which I'm going to teach you in this video. So as an immediate actionable step that you can take right now. So look at your own practice sessions. Are you really practicing focused and productively and with good exercises? Or are you just practicing for the sake of practicing? It turns out that practicing consistently doesn't matter at all if you can't even have good productive practice sessions. And to have this good and productive practice sessions, I use a concept that's actually in business, but I applied it to drumming. It's called leverage. So leverage is actually a very powerful tool if used right and i'm gonna show you how to do that in just a second so what's leverage well leverage is the difference between what you put into something and what you get out of something so in simpler monkey brain stupid terms it just means getting the most bang for your buck so the more you get out of something while putting the same effort or less effort the more high leverage this something is. And stay with me here because I know you want to click off this part, but this is the most important thing when it comes to your practice sessions. And it's a very interesting concept. So for example, would you say a drummer who practices seven days a week, but has shallow and unproductive practice sessions where he just kind of, you know, like mindlessly practices left hand for like 30 minutes straight has more high leverage than a drummer who practices like seven days a week. So still the same effort and has still good and productive practice sessions, more high leverage. Well, obviously the second drummer because he gets his most bang for the buck for his practice sessions. And now you might be saying like, okay, well, how do I get my most bang for my buck in my practice sessions, bro? I found that these three things that actually get us our most bang for the buck. The first thing is learning a new drum groove or new drum fill since you learn those drum grooves or fills once and then you can apply it to almost anything on drums. It basically gets you the most bang for your buck. Two is the warming up since you can only warm up for like five minutes then the entire two hour session or something you can literally be warmed up. And lastly is learning new rudiments. I'm emphasizing new here because if you repeat the old rudiments, then it doesn't get you the most bang for your buck. But if you learn new rudiments, you can apply it to almost anything on drums. Now, these aren't the only effective things, but things like these get us the most bang for a buck when practicing. And 99% of drummers probably clicked off this video right now when they heard this concept. But if you're still watching right now, I I can guarantee that you're going to surpass like those 99% of drummers. No doubt, bro. Because if you understand this concept, then your practice sessions will be really effective. And if you still don't believe that, then as a proof, here are the things that I do in my practice sessions, which don't include the warming up, by the way. But as you can see, I learn new grooves. I sometimes learn new rudiments. 
and all of that stuff. Part four, what's next? Now you're motivated and you're hyped up after watching this full guide, but none of it will actually work if you don't apply it in the first place. I remember watching countless hours of drum content and I was all hyped up. Yeah, let's practice some drums. But literally a day after I watched the video, I literally forgot everything that they've said. And I can tell you what to do and what to improve on, bro. But at the end of the day, you have to apply it. In order to apply these tips, we actually have to make it easier for ourselves to apply these tips. So as the last actionable step right now, think for three minutes, just three minutes, how you're going to apply these tips that you've learned throughout the video. What ways can you actually implement these tips to your own drumming? Really think about it in detail and just pause the video for a few minutes and just really think about it. And if you want to learn what I've learned after like two years of drumming and you want more advice just like this, then you can click this video next to see what I've learned after two years of drumming. Some very interesting tips over there as well. I'll see you in the next video and good luck with your drumming. I hope the road will be clear for you than my drumming. So yeah, peace. Poof. That was a long guide, boys. Do you see this? You see? <sighs> Dude, I haven't... It's like 2 p.m. and I haven't ate breakfast yet. Jesus Christ, man. My iPhone literally, like, died for, like, three times <laughs> while I was recording the video. There is no enough storage. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna eat now, boys. Let's see, see you later, I guess.